Hello, this is Philip Good speaking, and you are watching, hopefully, a screencast on Poleta Folds. Poleta Folds is an informal name for uh, for uh, um, an area about 10 kilometers squared area in eastern California, which has become a very popular setting for training of young geologists in uh, mapping and structural geology. And uh, hopefully, we'll ha we'll kind of have a look at it area. So um, uh, when I first saw this picture on Callan's website, I was really excited because I actually thought this could be the Poleta Fault itself uh, around this area uh, where I have my course on out. Um, but unfortunately, uh, so uh, let's have a look at it. Um, at first, I was really excited. Uh, that this very picture that uh, characterizes the whole California trip on Callan's uh, site could be the Poleta Falls itself, but unfortunately it isn't, even though, as you can tell from this Google Earth picture that I took, um, there is some similarities, and the similarities are mostly the uh, Playa Lake in front, uh, even though this is, uh, I believe, the Ovens, the Ovens Lake, and this is, uh, this is the Deep Springs Playa Lake. Um, so um, I'm not sure when we're gonna go there. Uh, I was searching for I was searching for it here, but I couldn't find it. But it's fairly sure that uh, that we're gonna visit the area in the first uh, four days because we're gonna be living very very close. Uh, and let's look at the area on Google Earth. This is where we're gonna be living for the first few days in a Watson research station in. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, this computer doesn't really have a fast connection uh, in the bishop. Actually, the street we're going to be living on is called the Poleta, uh, the Poleta Street. Um, and this area, very close to it, is the Poleta Faults themselves. Uh, let's turn this off so you can see it. And as you can see, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, it looks absolutely crazy. It's folded. It's colorful. It is everything one could ask for. Um, and we're going to get back to this soon. So a little more schematically. There we go. This is the area of the Poleta Folds. Uh, this is the ancient bristle cones. So we're going to go there as well. Um, this is where we're going to live, in the White Mountain, Mountain Research Station. Um, it's on border of White and Inyo Mountains. Moving on. Uh, this is too complicated. Here we are. There we are. I would like to present just a few major geologic events that shaped the area to the biggest extent. Uh, we'll start with, uh, with the Cambrian times, uh, which is when the Poleta formation itself was formed. Then we move on to Devonian times, where there was a major orogeny um, for the area, antler orogeny. And then we move on to uh, Jurassic times, when there was uh, the Nevada orogeny, um, a part of uh, the severe, severe orogeny, um, which formed the famous Nevadan volcanic arc. Um, so um, this is how the Earth uh, looked about uh, 550 million years ago in in uh, Cambrian, uh, late pre-Cambrian times. Um, um, what we're, the area we are interested in, um, let's see, um, this is Montana uh, today. This is roughly Montana today. So the area we're interested in lies somewhere around here uh, in the sea. Uh, moving on, Cameron Times, you can see still Montana here. Uh, we are interested in roughly this area. Still moving on, still roughly here, still in the sea. Um, there we go. So you can see clearly the coastline uh, of uh, in the Cambrian times was uh, was much more to the east than it is today, and the area, uh, the Poleta Falls area, was a part of a continental shelf. Um, notice that uh, America was also rotated about seventy five percent to in a, in the clockwise in the clockwise rotation uh, because the north was. Um, you know, we saw the north on the left side. So the area we were interested in was around here, um, which in that time was fairly close to the equator. Um, 
um, as you can see um, the the C um, as you can see here uh, the Paleta area was a part of the shelf in a warm coastal area um, which which had appropriate effects on um, on the on the sedimentation of the area uh, there are there are limestones uh, there are shales today um, oh wonderful uh, there's actually oolitic limestone which uh, which we saw most of us probably saw in the Rockies uh, this is my own picture from the from the um, uh, Glacier National Park area um, and uh, here is the um, simplified stratigraph stratigraphic column of the of the area today. Um, as I said, there are limestones, uh, there are shells, um, uh, which would which would come from the from the muds in the deeper sea. Um, there are quartzites somewhere here, quartzites, ortho quartzites, uh, which would be um, which would uh, come from the sand of the riverbeds. Um, yeah, f fairly typical sedimentation. Um, the interesting, the good thing for us is that it is color coded, right? The shells are dark. Uh, the limestones tend to be tend to be uh, lighter or buffed. Sometimes marbled over the over the time into sort of uh, uh, blue buff marbles. So so it's very colorful as you could see in the Google Earth picture, and uh, good for mapping. Good for uh, good for seeing the faults. The, the Paleta Formation is also famous, actually, for uh, for its uh, archaeo uh, uh population, which is an uh, index index fossil. It is uh, it is uh, a, a type of uh, calciferous sponge, um, but it's not really visible in the in the in the in the Poleta Faults area itself, but what really amazed me is that the because of this, the Poleta Formation actually is on Facebook, uh, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, and I think uh, maybe later we have time, you know, we should all go there and like it. Uh, I kind of wanted to, wanted to like it online here, you know, in the, within the uh, within the screencast, but uh, I don't think I have time. So let's move on. Well, let's look at the, let's look at the structural. Um, the structure of the area a little bit. Uh, first, in well, friendly friendly reminder what thrust fault is. There's normal faults, there's reverse faults, and there's thrust faults. And thrust fault is the one where the older rocks get thrusted over young rocks. In our case, uh, in our case, the older uh, Cambrian uh, Cambrian uh, Poleta fault rocks get thrusted over younger. Uh, over younger um, Paleozoic rocks. Um, so the first one uh, in Devonian times, about uh, about 350 million years ago, uh, there was something called the Antler Orogeny. Uh, as it happens, uh, there was a there was a subduction zone, and uh, an island arc came and it smashed into uh, into the today. Uh, uh, later or later to be North America, um, and it created uh, an archipelago or or a, a mountainous uh, mountainous arc of uh, of islands. Uh, and Poleta Fault was a part of that. Now, the thing to note here is that at the time that was still uh, in a continental shelf. Uh, it wasn't a part of the continent. Like you know, it was still below the water, right? Um, and then there was, and then there was uh, about 400 years of uh, relative, you know, not uh, not happening much, even though there was tsunami orogeny and a number of smaller orogenies that would that would that would smash uh, periodically uh, into 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 uh, the mainland, and uh, you know, the building and the structural changes would would continue, but there would not be any really major change. That happened with the Nevada orogeny. Uh, which happened about uh, 140 uh, million years ago, uh, or in the early Jurassic times. Uh, and now, uh, the interesting part is that, as you can see, the subduction, there's a new subduction zone, and the subduction is actually uh, in the opposite direction than it was before. Uh, now, um, that, that's because, that's because uh, uh, at, you know, before that, uh, the Atlantic Ocean, on the other side of, of the continent, started, started spreading. And 
and so there was a uh, new subaction zone formed here, and, and, the, and the continent actually started drifting, uh, drifting westwards a little bit. Um, and uh, this, uh, this created the Nevadan volcanic arc. Uh, there, was, uh, there was mostly high angle, uh, high angle folding and folding uh, synchronous in the northeast direction. Um, uh, sometimes there would be uh, intrusion of uh, lamprophar dikes. I'm mentioning them mostly because um, many of us probably seen those uh, at the Billy Goats Trail, uh, where Kellen has another, uh, another field trip. After that, after that, the area was uh, fairly boring, again structurally, until the uh, until the Farallon plate and the Laramide orogeny came around. So here, uh, uh, well, this has severe orogeny. Nevada, or Nevada orogeny uh, was a part of severe orogeny, uh, as you can see. The Sierra Nevada, the, the Nevada magmatic arc, or uh, is here. Uh, but then the Laramide orogeny came came upon uh, the land. When uh, when something called Farallon slab uh, got subducted, it it was probably just a thick part of the crust that you know uh, would um, for various there are various explanations that we don't have time for, uh, but but it pretty much shut down the Nevada magmatic arc and it created and it created the uh, melting of the melting of the crust and 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 magmatism much farther east, uh, which was. Uh, Pretty much the rise of the Rocky Mountains. Uh, what it means for us is is uh, uh, that it marked the beginning of basin and range extinction, and this is uh, and this is the last major structural change for the Poeta Falls area. Um, that would be in uh, in Miocene age, uh, age uh, characterized by um, high angle normal faulting, not thrust faulting anymore. You know, but 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 the normal faulting happens. Uh, you know, while the thrust faults were already there, so that makes it structurally interesting. And and uh, as you can see here on the right side, on the right side, uh, there was really significant extension. The, the whole Nevada area uh, extended uh, extended in the west-east direction significantly, which which uh, which gave rise to many horsts, grabbins, and and as I've said, normal faulting. Um, so there are some, uh, so there's in general very nice folding and faulting observable in the area. Observable in the area. Here on the first picture, there's a there's a nice syncline here, here, uh, here you can see a wonderful, wonderful fault. Um, here's another anticline with a, a little anticlinarium or something like that. Uh, some good stuff. Actually, I wanted to show you something here on Google Earth. If we look. If we look uh, to the eastern uh, to the eastern part uh, of the mountain, uh, of the Poleta Falls area, uh, it's the, the, you, you, you see these facets, and it's clear that there's a fault line running fault line running right here. Uh, beautiful, beautiful line. And uh, I think uh, that's gonna be it. Uh, I'm uh, I'm probably over over my allotted time anyway. Uh, I hope uh, it was at least somewhat understandable. This was the first time I did uh, a screencast. Uh, um, uh, good luck to you all, and I'll uh, be looking forward to see you. Bye.